This is Valley View News. Volunteers pick oranges at the Sea Sun Orchard and they do it for a good cause. A Long Beach restaurant's lobster game has animal activists crying foul. And we had a backstage pass to a university orchestra playing music from all over the world. Hello and welcome to Valley View News. I'm Marta Maciel. And I'm Eileen Carranza. California has a new budget, but at the expense of many social programs. Governor Schwarzenegger has vetoed nearly $1 billion that would go toward programs like welfare and child care. While he cut spending for much of the general budget, he bulked up the state's reserve for emergencies like wildfires. Advocates for the poor say the cuts will hurt those who need the help the most. The spending plan totals about $125 billion. The legislator passed the budget 100 days after it was due. That's a record for being late. Some energetic people of San Fernando Valley pick fruit for a good cost. A group called Food Forward has joined together to donate fruit to charity. Valley View News reporter Sharona Elayar reports. These people are helping food pantries get a little more fruitful. A grassroots organization called Food Forward came to Cal State University Northridge's Orange Grove to fill their boxes up with fruit. People get paid to do that, you know, out in Central California to do it. I do believe that people do need healthy food. I really like giving back to less fortunate people. I usually find myself doing these things on weekends. They used ladders and long wooden broomsticks with little baskets known as fruit pickers to collect and donate oranges to those who are hungry. I've got my handy tool here and uh, it uh, just gets a little hot in the sun. <laughs> so I prefer to find a shady spot and um, sometimes branches get in the way, but it's, uh, it's fun. The nonprofit group has one to two organized picks a week where they donate 100% of their fruit to local Los Angeles food pantries. The produce goes to organizations like SOVA. The pantries distribute food to more than 25,000 people a month across Southern California. Food Forward has collected more than 270,000 pounds of harvest since it started a year ago. That's equivalent to over a million servings of fruits and vegetables. Food Forward collects any produce that is fresh and edible. We've picked, uh, uh, of course, the citrus, uh, lemons and grapefruits, but we've done avocados. There is an abundance of food in Southern California that was going to waste. Tomatoes. Uh, some some vegetables. We could help move food forward to those who need it. She estimates more than 2,000 pounds will be picked in two hours. It's a simple concept. We make a difference. In Northridge, I'm Sharona Aliar reporting for Valley View News. Research shows that a pest-resistant corn crop helps other plants as well. BT corn has been genetically modified to produce proteins that slow down the European corn borer, a common harvest pest in the U.S. The pesky bugs lay eggs on the underside of corn leaves. Farmers say BT corn means fewer bugs survive, and that helps protect plants that have not been genetically altered. Scientists say farmers around the country have saved more than $6 million in reduced yield losses. A study says California leads the nation in spending on first-year college students who drop out. The study says California spends about $500 million taxpayer dollars on students who drop out before their sophomore year. Texas and New York rank second and third. Nationwide, about 30 percent of students never return to campus for a second year. Valley View asked students at Cal State Northridge their opinions on the dropout rate and the amount taxpayers spend on higher education. I don't really think it's a waste of money. I think that it's important for the California taxpayer to fund these kinds of things. I mean, they also, the, the taxpayer is also funding the tutoring, which is an option that's free to all students if you pay tuition. Um, I'm a transfer student from junior college, and without that support that I had in junior college, I wouldn't be here right now. The study does not look at students' reason for not returning after their first year in college, but some offer their own explanations. Yeah, I've thought about like, oh, I'd rather just work right now and be making money rather than going to school that I don't even like doing. I've had friends drop out because it, it just got too much and their parents lost their job and they have no choice but to drop out. Yeah, money is a big factor, but people are lazy in general. <laughs> but like me, I'm engineering, so I have to study. I study hard and, you know, I hope it's going to pay off. 
Overall, the nation spent more than $6 billion on first-year college students who did not return the next year. The race for California's governor and Senate remained wide open with just weeks until Election Day. Three major candidates were in Southern California last week lobbying for votes. New York City Mayor Rudy Giuliani was in Van Nuys speaking on behalf of Republican candidate Meg Whitman. Meg Whitman declined to comment on a recording in which her opponent, Jerry Brown's campaign, allegedly made profane comments about her. Brown's campaign canceled a scheduled appearance in Los Angeles. Nearly $17 billion have been cut from California schools over the past two years, and another $2.4 billion may be cut next year. Many California teachers say they are trying to find new ways to educate their students and maintain their ill-equipped classrooms. Teachers buy cheap whiteboards and pull used worksheets out of the trash. Parents and local business have been helping out the classrooms. Teachers are also getting help from donation websites like DonorsChoose.org. Public broadcasting giant KCET has announced it is parting ways with PBS and becoming an independent station. The station has aired PBS content for 40 years, but a recent spat with the network over the, dues, over the cost of dues led to the decision. BBS is scrambling to make its programming available in Los Angeles once KCET pulls the plug on January 1st. Orange County BBS affiliate KOCE will likely attempt to fill the void left by KCET with PBS favorites like Sesame Street, Antique Roadshow, and Frontline. Many college students may not listen to too much classical music, but Valley View News' Joe Valley reports on how College Student Symphony Orchestra is keeping classical music alive. Some people might find Dvorak a difficult composer for a college symphony orchestra to undertake, but not for the Azusa Pacific University Symphony Orchestra. They performed multiple Dvorak pieces in their opening night on the APU campus. Bass, cello, violin, harp, drums, wind instruments. Put them all together and you get something like this. The Azusa Pacific Symphony Orchestra conducted its opening concert, which was a series of Dvorak pieces. Cymbal player Andrew Bixler explains how he feels about playing in the orchestra. It's this overwhelming feeling of joy and being able to sh hold your shoulders back and tall and being proud, saying this is what the um, composer intended, this is the emotion which he wanted to convey, and I have given it to you. The orchestra was conducted by Christopher Russell, who has conducted orchestras all over the world. You have to reflect the emotions that the composer put in the score in order to, to bring it alive. You know, there's certain things that we would do on this program that we won't do on our next concert. You know, certain moods and that, and that sort of thing that were appropriate tonight, but might not be appropriate next week. The Dvorak pieces that are played tonight invoke certain emotions deep in the human spirit. Emotions such as sadness, anxiety, and soothing calm and joy. APU Symphony Orchestra President Amy Noonan explains what the symphony does for others. I organize one of our affiliations with Promise Child, where we sponsor two kids for um, just their own benefit. They live in Nepal and in India. Shang Zheng started playing cello at a very young age in Shanghai, China. Zheng played a solo tonight and says this performance is another stepping stone in his career as an artist. I'm very excited, but since I'm, I'm performing all the time, so it's like one of the performances in my life. But I really appreciate it for the orchestra and the school support me. The audience turnout was good, and over 300 people came out to enjoy classical music. I can't, I can't believe they're doing the Dvorak concert. This is wonderful. It's gorgeous. I've never actually heard these pieces before, so it's really wonderful. I feel really bad about that. I like um, classical music, but um, I've never heard these before. They're really terrific. The Free Dvorak concert was a great kickoff for the orchestra this semester. The orchestra is now planning a tour of the southern United States to play classical music. Back to you. 
The city of Beverly Hills has launched its own line of perfume. Experts who follow the perfume business say that this is the first city to launch its own beauty products. The fragrance is made in Switzerland from flowers that are grown in Beverly Hills. The city hopes to make $500,000 in revenue over five years. The beauty products will sell in department stores for around $120. A restaurant in Long Beach has some animal activists angry. Valley View reporter Martha Marcial has more on the story. Beach Club! Beach Club! Several animal activist groups protested against animal cruelty in front of the Beach Club, a bar and grill located in Long Beach. We're protesting them because they have a game called the Lobster Zone. The Lobster Zone is a game that um, has a contraption. If you've ever seen a game where you put in a quarter and you use a joystick and you have those a claw, that crane that goes down and you pick up stuffed animal and try to win it, they have that game here and that game uses live lobsters. Customers can put $2 in the machine to try to capture a lobster. If they catch it, they'll cook it for them for free. The Beach Club owners reacted to the protest through their website saying, while we strive to accommodate everyone, we fully understand this simply is not possible. Some may not care for sports and some don't like alcohol, but we don't remove the TVs or the alcohol. We understand PETA followers don't like the lobster machine and they are certainly entitled to their opinion. But like others don't like sports or alcohol, they can simply choose to spend their time elsewhere. It's like being in jail when you fight to get out, you know. Jimmy Vaitia, who also protested, says that it's just wrong to abuse any animal. You know, they're stuck, they're suffering, they have no words, so we're, we're the voice for these animals. We're the voice for these lobsters here. Ben Goldberg, a customer from the Beach Club, says that the protesters should focus on other issues. I'm just wondering why these people are here. We've got a war going on in Afghanistan. We have nuclear holocaust pending in uh, North Korea and all these problems in the Middle East. And these people have taken their time out of their lives to defend the rights of a, of a lobster. The animal advocates say that lobsters are intelligent animals capable of experiencing fear and pain. Even though there were only around 20 protesters, they will continue fighting and promoting the protest through other media. The animal protection groups will continue protesting in front of the beach club every Saturday until they remove the lobster zone. Right. In Long Beach, I am Marta Maciel for Valley View News. Coming up, how will California vote for marijuana legalization and TV may be worse for your health than you thought?